Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us here at the TEFL Org for this webinar where I'm going to be talking about teaching online in 2022. Uh, this is a live question and answer session. It's currently one minute past four on a Friday afternoon. Beautiful sunshine. I've just had to put the blackout blind here in Northern Ireland where I'm based. And um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have about teaching English as a foreign language online in 2022 or any other questions you might have about the field of TEFL. Thank you for joining us. As I said, please say hello in the chat. I can see some lots of chat already going ahead on a Friday afternoon, which is fantastic. Please let me know where you are in the world. My name is Carl. I'm here in Northern Ireland where I work as a tutor for the TEFL Org. So if you do any of the practical courses here in Northern Ireland or sometimes I'm out in the west of Ireland or down in Dublin, you might have me as a tutor. I have been lucky enough to have taught in many countries around the world, China, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Iraq. Pre-COVID, I was spending a lot of time working in Spain and Italy. I also work as an examiner, teacher trainer, and I have my own business where I teach students online. So any questions related to that, please also put that in the chat. Hello, Nana in Birmingham. Uh, Eleanor in the Ukraine. Hello, Ukraine. It's fantastic to have someone from the Ukraine now. I hope you're well and safe, Elena. Uh, Glenn in central Pennsylvania, is that USA? Mackie in Texas. Hello, Barbara in France. Shannon in South Africa. Stephen in Manchester. Isn't it lovely? Ellen, you're always with us. Hello, Ellen. Um, uh, Glenn has some relatives in Newton Ards just down the road from me. Hello, Georgia in Austin. Oh, look, all the hellos are coming in. I can't keep up with them. Thank you for joining us. I will be delivering a webinar. Alan will be monitoring the chat. So any links or anything like that that gets put in, Alan will be in charge of that. So teaching online in 2022. If you have any questions as I'm going through this, please put them in the chat. I will get to them at the end. OK, that's the best way. And then I'll deal with all the questions at the end of this webinar. So please keep watching. So teaching English online in 2022. So something I get asked quite a bit is, is there a market still in 2022? Obviously, when COVID started, there's there a big rush to get online. And I know that we really had so many people applying to be a TEFL teacher in 2020. Is that right? Yes, 2020 it must be. And and but since then, people have saying, is there still the market? Because obviously some schools have gone back to face to face and they're not working so much online. And the short answer to working online in 2022 is yes, there is still a market in 2022. I would in fact say that March 2022 now, I've personally seen more jobs online as in jobs being advertised online than I did maybe sort of six months ago because it sort of peaked, this is my opinion, it sort of peaked the amount of, uh, so the, the uh, sorry, it sort of fell the amount of jobs that were still available about six months ago. But now I've noticed it started to get a bit more and there's more and more jobs being advertised. So I just wanna, just for example, if you're looking at this and you are thinking, where can I get some work? If you go onto our website at the TEFL org, or um, if you just go on our website, and I'll show you the website in a bit. If you go on that, um, there's currently nine online jobs advertised. So that's not talking about face-to-face -face jobs, and it's not talking about voluntary jobs. This is paid online TEFL jobs. Now, that's just our website. That might not sound like much, but that's actually quite a lot in terms of a number of jobs being advertised, because it might not be one person that they're looking for. Sometimes companies advertise looking for 10, 12. I've seen adverts where they look for 50 people. So that's just our website if you go to TEFL org. OK, um, now I've also had a look on websites such as eslcafe.com. And um, if you look on there, there's loads and loads of jobs on there. OK, so 
If you just have a look on our website, tefl.org, and if you look on eslcafe.com, you'll see loads of jobs advertised. And then, of course, there's lots of other websites. There's lots of other social media sites that list jobs. OK, so just um, have a look out there. There's definitely jobs out there in 2022. Teaching online is here to stay just because now some sort of countries are moving towards having to live with COVID doesn't mean that online teaching is going to stop. I was teaching online for a good four years before COVID started, making money, making a living out of it. And I think what's happened is now we're going to get into a stage where the online jobs stay and run alongside the face to face jobs. So there's definitely, definitely online teaching. OK, and 2022 has started to see the increase again after a bit of a lull towards the end of 2021. I think. OK, so this is my opinion about the state of it now in 2022. But so that was all positive, of course, but I'm just going to throw out a but there. OK, there is still a lot of competition for jobs. There is still a lot of people advertising. So a lot of people looking for work and there's a lot. Of, some people sort of you'll see a lot of people applying online saying they can't get work. And I'm going to get to them in a bit. But there is a lot of competition. I don't want to sugarcoat it for you. I don't need to say if you do a course with us, you're guaranteed to get work. We don't say that at all because there is a lot of competition. All right. And schools that in recruit. So you might get a recruitment company that are taking on people and you might get a school that's advertising people just for themselves. So. I've run language schools. If I wanted a teacher to come to me, I would just place an advert for that one language school. But you would also see recruitment agents putting up adverts for a whole range of schools. OK, that's how that sort of works. And those schools and those recruitment agents, they do have certain standards that they need to get for, from an applicant. So while you might see that there's lots of competition, you can really stand out from that competition by certain hitting certain standards that the schools are looking for and the number one way is a quality teaching qualification so having a qualification from a company where the certificate you get and the course you do is accredited by a good accreditation company so that means a company for example here at the tefl org we are checked by an external company that's nothing to do with us. That external company will come, they will check the tutors, they will check the materials you're given, they'll be checked, they'll check your um, uh, the student's work to check that it's coming up to the right standard and we're not just passing everybody. And schools and recruitment agents want a good quality certificate from the teachers they take on, okay? And that the magic number really for that is about 120 hours. So schools will see and you'll see adverts saying, do you have a 120 hour TEFL certificate, accredited TEFL certificate? You do. Fantastic. Come with us. So we offer courses. TEFL.org offers courses. Ours are accredited. Ours go up to this magic number of 120. People take our courses, they find work. OK. However, there are companies out there that are, going, that are cheaper than us. There are companies out there that say it's 120 hours, but maybe they don't have the rigorous accreditation we do. Maybe they don't have the um, the checks in that we do. So just be aware that if you go with a different company for a certification, that might mean you don't find work because your certificate's not worth much. So just something to be aware of. OK, schools also are looking for a high level of English and you'll see lots and lots of adverts and it will say native speakers only or it will say native speakers required, something like this. And people think, well, I can't do that because English isn't my first language. But a lot of companies will take on people with a high level of English and I'm talking sort of IELTS 8 maybe IELTS 7.5 and higher. They'll take on teachers who can show that they have a C1 on the Common European Framework of Reference, 
uh, language skills in English. They'll take that as a native speaker. So if you see people saying there's no work, there's no work, maybe they haven't been able to prove their English is good enough to work there. OK, so just just this is really for non native speakers. OK, so just something to be aware of. Schools also have certain visa requirements, and this is to work online as well as to work face to face. Some schools will stick to the visa requirements of that country, even if you're not physically going to that country to work. You're going to be working online through Zoom or whatever it might be. Schools stick to this because they want to um, they, they want to be a legitimate school within the country that they're in, basically. So just be aware that you might have a high, a good teaching qualification. You might be able to prove that you've, you're a native speaker or you have a high level of English. You might have lots of certificates, but if your country doesn't match the visa requirements of that, of the country where that school is based or that recruiter is based, maybe you can't find work. Just something to be aware of, okay? Let's go back to being positive. So you want to be a teacher. OK, and it's fantastic. I have been teaching for 20 years. It's fantastic. I've loved it. I've taught online. I've also taught face to face. It's a great career. I really recommend anyone get into it, even if you just go and do it for a year. I think it's a fantastic thing to do. But if you're going to work online, you've got to have realistic expectations. And these expectations might be too low. They might be too high for you. I don't know. Everybody individually has different expectations different countries have different expectations obviously the minimum wage here in the uk is going to be higher than the sort of average wage in some other parts of asia africa that kind of thing so if you see jobs advertising you think well that wage is too low it might be too low for you but actually it might be really good for someone else so just be aware of that okay schools won't <coughs> sorry schools won't hire you full time straight away an online school if they see a, if they advertise for people if they advertise come you'll have full time hours with us within a week that's very very rare okay schools very often online schools very often want to take you on and just you'll teach two three five hours a week to start off with they want to know how you are doing in terms of are you friendly are you nice do the students like you that kind of thing so don't expect to start get your certificate be online teaching next week and to have a full schedule it won't it doesn't work like that okay and you're probably not going to earn over 20 pounds an hour at the start now you'll see jobs advertised for sort of 10 11 12 dollars an hour maybe that's really really happy for you and really 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 good for you fantastic and down the line you can earn 30 40 maybe 50 pounds an hour i have been lucky enough at times to have earned that much from students but to start off with you're not going to be up there probably earning 20 pounds an hour. You're probably going to have to be sort of in the low 10, 11, 12 pounds an hour, maybe even less because you might be earning that much in dollars. Just something to be aware of straight away. And it might take you a while for a school to hire you. You've got your certificate, you've passed, fantastic. But the process takes a while. It can take two, three. I once waited two years for a job to start, okay? It can take a while for companies to get all their admin in action. Just be aware of that. OK. So how do you get started? First thing, first, first, first thing is you get a good certificate. Get a good certificate from us or if you're going to go with another company, check out that accreditation from the other company. Look clearly on their website who is accrediting them. Look very clearly. Can you tell that the tutors are qualified all that kind of thing? All right. If you've got your certificate and you feel like that might not be enough, then maybe think about some extra training. So we offer, for example, extra modules. So we offer modules in teaching kids. We offer modules in teaching business English, that kind of thing. 
the certificate might not be enough. And I say this as someone with a CELTA, a Delta, 120 hour certificate. I've got a master's. I've got um, a certificates in like ELT management, in doing observations. I've got loads and loads of qualifications, but I still see jobs where they I'm not quite I haven't got enough qualifications for them education is a field where you've got to keep training you've got to keep learning and if you're going to do this long term you've got to keep thinking about doing extra training maybe so think okay I really want to teach kids you might do an extra add-on module for something like that take your time over your application as someone who has looked at hundreds of TEFL teachers applications over the years you can tell that some of them have been written in two or three minutes you can just tell it's not very well organized there's not much thought gone into it sometimes it's not been checked take your time would you like a teacher that hasn't put much time into application don't just apply for one job when you start if you find a job online and you see it advertised and you think right that's the job i'm going to go for or keep looking for a couple more because as i said you might not be full-time straight away it might take them a while for them to recruit you don't just apply for one job okay but flip side of that don't go applying for 20. i would put in two three applications the reason why i wouldn't apply for loads all at once is because if you're given a bad application and you don't know it but you're you're sending off a bad cv or you're sending off a bad cover letter whatever it might be and i should just say here that graduates from our school from our, our courses we help them with all this kind of thing um if you apply to loads and you're sending off a bad application and you get rejected lots you've kind of wasted nine schools. Whereas if you have applied for one or two and you've been rejected from both of them, stop, take a look at your application, think what can I do to maybe get my foot into the door more, okay? If you're a non-native speaker and different companies and different places have different levels of what a non-native speaker is. Some people say you had to have had your uh, high school education in English. Some say you need to have had your speaking English since birth. Some say if you've got a university degree in English, that's enough. Depends. Ask if you if you're not sure, email the company and ask what is a native speaker. Think about proving your English ability. So can you take an IELTS test? Can you take a Trinity test? Can you take a Cambridge test to show that you are a high level user of English? research the companies check 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 look and look and look at all the companies research them okay check that they are good check what the teachers are saying about them see if if you think oh i can't apply for that one because i'm not a native speaker look on facebook look on reddit look on discord whatever it might be and see if you can find people who maybe don't have an english sounding name working for them they might have proven their english ability and they're off and running they're going so in 2022, what countries are advertising? Now, this changes often. How it is in March might be different from how it is in June. OK, and the main sort of issue is that the China situation is still quite up in the air. You might have read last year that um, they sort of called a lot of companies that they thought weren't hitting certain standards. OK, so the China situation is mad. The other the other problem is China's going in and out of lockdowns all over the place. So China is a bit difficult at the moment. And lots of people think about China, but it doesn't work. And it doesn't work at the moment because it's all a bit fluid and all a bit changeable. OK, what I have seen, though, recently is a lot of adverts for Latin America. I've seen a lot of recruiters in on Facebook groups. I've also seen some companies advertising on our website for Latin American countries. So I think that they are at the moment the ones that are sort of recruiting at the moment. And they're really fun students. I'd really go for a bit of that if I was you. OK. Um, what it is worth doing is contacting companies and contacting schools directly. So if you want to 
go work in Spain and or you want to go teach online in Spain, I would not wait for a spa an advert from a Spanish school to appear. I would be all over Google looking for schools and I would be sending them my CV. I would be sending them saying because they probably have online classes as well as face to face classes. That's the current situation in 2022. So I would really just go down that route and just email, 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 contact, contact, contact. Okay. What you also need to be doing, and this isn't necessarily true for 2022. I think this has been right since the start of the pandemic and even before that, is work as a freelancer as well as working for a company. Because long term, having your own students is the best way. It is. And it takes time. It does take time. It's not the easiest way. So work for a company while at the same time building up your online brand, your online teaching website, whatever it might be, does take the longest to get going. I really would not say to anybody who's new to TEFL, right, what you should do is just only go alone as a freelancer. You've just got your certificate, fantastic, go straight on its own as a freelancer. Long term, it's the best way. But I think really you need to be working for a company whilst at the same time finding your own students because they're out there and they are looking and they do quite often want the students prefer to to pay for someone one-on-one -on -one instead of paying for a school something like that think of a niche and a niche is a part of tefl you would like to teach so are you happy teaching kids great then what age kids you have you teaching teenagers fantastic find some teenagers parents out there who want their kids to learn english you like business English, get out there, let let business English be your guide and let um, uh, and, and you can be the business English teacher. Ha that helps with the Google searches. It helps with your marketing. Uh, myself and Alan have done loads of videos on this. So go back and have a look at it if that's the sort of thing you're looking at. Get a website, get a social media pages and get a marketing strategy. The most important thing you can learn is marketing here funnels and keywords and search engines and all this kind of thing is important get that going and you will get students to your website i've recently started a new website and it's going okay and i think the reason why it's going okay is because my marketing is doing well okay uh, start small persevere don't just think you're going to be up and running as a freelancer with a full-time contract within the first week, within the first month, within the first six months. No, it takes a long time. It really does. And you have to keep at it all the time. But long term, it's the best way. Don't listen in 2022 or any other year to the negative Nellies. Okay, really don't. You will see people on social media complaining. You will. Oh, drives me mad. Don't listen to them. You will see people on social media say, oh, there's no work out there. They probably don't have a good qualification. They probably just have, they probably just don't have a very good application. They might not be showing a good level of English in their applications. Okay. All right. Uh, busy teachers don't have the time to get online saying how great the schools are and how much work there is out there. Okay. They really don't. So if you see, you only see negative tests you'll only see negative people talking you won't see positive people okay all right there's definitely work out that i have trained teachers recently who are now working it takes perseverance to get a job it really does okay what are the benefits of working online freedom is the most important one if you're on the fence about this and you're not sure whether to get out there because you think there's not any work out there think of the freedom you would get from working in your own office your your spare bedroom, whatever it might be, teaching online. You get to choose when you work a lot of the time, you, especially if you're going freelance. This is why freelance is the way forward. When you're working for a company, it's difficult, but you could, depending on your uh, time zone, you can really find work pretty easily out there that sort of fits the time you want to teach, I believe. Um, can also have a bit of freedom over who you teach. Can be a bit of freedom over what you teach, that kind of thing, all right? location and the time so you want to teach spanish students fantastic you want to teach korean students you'll find jobs 
career is one of the more difficult ones because you need a degree and all this kind of thing. But you'll find students out there from career who want to find work, okay? It's fun. I can't tell you how much fun it is to be sat in my room in Belfast talking to people around the world. I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. You can often online earn more than your local wage. So as I said earlier, you might not earn 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds an hour straight away. But you should be earning more than your average local wage. You should, okay? Like the, 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 let's just say the minimum wage. Maybe not go with the average wage because, you know, at the end of the day, you're a teacher, not a rock star. Um, although there are rock star teachers out there with massive YouTube followings. They drive me mad. Anyway, um, the minimum wage here is about £10 an hour in the UK. There are jobs out there for more than that. And I know that I know what I would rather be doing, sitting in my room talking to people around the world instead of doing a job that I don't really like for minimum wage. OK, and it can also be a stepping stone to working abroad. Don't think oh, I'm just an online teacher. No, I know a few people recently who during COVID taught online just to see if they like teaching, just to sort of see if they like talking to students and then eventually went and worked abroad. It's definitely something that can be done. OK. Definitely. Right, I'm going to get to all of these lovely questions that are definitely coming in. Uh, right, uh, let me just get rid of that screen. There we go. Uh, Shivani, hello. Was that the first question, Alan? I think it was. 3.46, a while back in. Shivani was up early before even anybody else did. Or was it Doug? Alan, whatever the first question. That's it, Alan. Thank you. Uh, what's being discussed generally about various platforms is that there is an excess supply of teachers, but not enough students. Uh, as a teacher, how do I get students? Right. Well, OK, we've done I've done videos about this, about finding your own students, Shivani. The first thing is definitely to get a niche. And that is, as I said, a part of English. Don't be Shivani, the English teacher, because you will be competing against so many people. But if you could be Shivani, the let's say IELTS reading teacher. Most people, and the research shows, most students, they Google online, not learn English. They put into Google something like improve my IELTS reading, uh, improve my English pronunciation, something like that. So have a proper niche and have a good marketing strategy where you funnel people through to a website, through social media pages, that kind of thing. And, and just keep be very active with it, Shivani. And Shivani, as I said, there's companies out there advertising. There are. There are. And they wouldn't be advertising if they didn't have students. Why would, why would a company pay to advertise if they didn't have students? There's work out there, Shivani. Definitely. Okay? And there are students out there if there's work out there. Good luck with it, Shivani. Uh, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Always nice to see your face. Is there a time of year, early spring, for example, where one can find good intermediate online ESL positions? So a TEFL job or posting too late. Right. I see. So. Right. Different parts of the world start their academic year differently. So some depends where you want to go, Elizabeth. So. For example, when I went to Japan, they recruit a lot of people to start in around October time. And then they try and keep people to stay for a year. OK, uh, can be some parts of Asia where they start in January. OK, because they tend to go with the school year. But I don't think that there's one particular time when they advertise a lot. So what you really need to sort of think is where do you want to go? OK, and you've got to think where what time is right for you, because as I said, it could take a while for the applications to go through. If you're going to go work abroad, it can take three months for visas, for health checks, this for criminal checks to come through. So definitely just I would if I was here in March now, I'd be hoping to start abroad sort of June, July time. That's what I would sort of be saying. OK. Does that answer your question, Elizabeth? I think it does. You've got to check these job boards all the time. When I'm looking for work, I'm daily, twice daily, three times daily on there. Okay. Uh, really am, Elizabeth. Good luck. 
Um, you deserve a good job abroad, Elizabeth. Uh, Jennifer, uh, you would like to ask if there are places for TEFL certified teachers to teach elementary age students, but not in an elementary school. OK, so if you go work for a language school, you will get a, a huge most language schools that I've worked at. For example, when I went to work in Japan, the language school had kids. It had kids sort of five, six, seven years old. It had teenagers. It also had adults. It also had specialized classes. So generally, wherever you go and work, if you go work for a language, private language school, not a high school, not a, not a school owned by the government, wherever you go, that will give you a range of students and a lot of those, more than 50% will be kids. OK, so if you're going to go work online, then they generally tell you the type of students that they have. So if you're going to go work online as a uh, you see a job advertised online, they tend to tell you the age of students. And these schools tend to not be an elementary school. They tend to be a, um, a, a private company that has students coming in for like after school clubs or preschool clubs that kind of thing most classes around the world are kids jennifer elementary age i don't know but they, they they generally tend to be kids okay so yes is the answer mr or miss kaoba uh what do you recommend for lesson planning if all i've ever done with vfsl is a platform provided curriculum hello from montana so Planning your own lessons from scratch is difficult, but also very rewarded. OK, so if you do a course with us, we will teach you how to do lesson planning and how you would teach a, a vocabulary lesson is different from how you would teach a reading or a skills or a speaking lesson. So there's not sort of one way I could tell you and there's also within like teaching grammar there's different ways of teaching grammar that some people think is better than the others okay so it does it is not a special one size fits all way of lesson planning okay but if you come and do a good course we teach you how to be a TEFL teacher and lesson planning is a big part of that okay I feel like I might have copped out a bit of that one but I, I feel like that was I hope that answered your question uh Mr. or Miss Kerber. How do I organize an effective speaking lesson online? So, right, within speaking, there's lots of skills, there's lots of sub skills. So, for example, teaching presentation speaking is very different from debate speaking, which is very different from sort of how you would teach a pronunciation part of speaking. So, really, what how I tend to do speaking is I would combine it with a vocab or a grammar lesson and you would this is how i do it and you do a little bit of grammar and then they have to do speaking activities around that grammar that you're presenting if i'm doing a pronunciation that's different so pronunciation tends to involve a little bit of listening looking for something called minimal pairs before producing them yourself correctly uh, if you're doing tone and stress and rhythm this kind of thing you know, you've got to do lots of listening and modeling it and do the clapping and do the, the fingers to show when the stress is when you speak, that kind of thing, and getting the students to copy it and repeat it, that kind of thing. So it's not just you shouldn't really be saying today is a speaking lesson. You should be saying today is a pronunciation lesson. And within that pronunciation, we're going to just look at one or two sounds, Joseph. You shouldn't just do a whole wide cover everything in speaking that's my recommendation to you joe hope it works out um heather how do you teach writing online well how do you teach writing with a face-to-face -face class however you teach however i have taught face-to-face -face, i teach exactly the same online just use different tools to help me so a lot of writing tends to be doing something called genre analysis what that means is students are trying to replicate something in order to with their writing. So a bit like, as I just said to Joseph about the speaking, you don't really say today's a writing lesson. You would say something like today we're looking at paragraphs. Today we're looking at cohesive devices within sentences. You don't tend to just look at one thing. So you break down that mini skill. 
and then you look at a genre that they're trying to replicate. So if it's an exam lesson, they would want to replicate a good quality exam answer and repeat that themselves. And you would see, right, this is how, look how they've used paragraphs. And then you analyze it and then you have to say, right, what words have they used? Fantastic, where have they used them? Then you repeat them, right, now do that in your own writing. There we go. I hope that answered your question there, Heather. Um, Rachel, where are the online jobs posted on your website? You only see in-person jobs. Uh, I'm guessing Alan probably gave you the link if, because he's very good at this kind of thing, Rachel. But if you go to, let me just get the website up. If you go to and share my screen, if you go to, have you noticed how people talk more slowly when they're sharing their screen to give them a bit more time to do it? If you go to our website, if you click at the top here, Tefl Jobs, Rachel, uh, Tefl.org is what I should have say. If you go to um, Tefl Jobs, and if you go down to, thank you, Alan. Um, has it gone a bit slow because I'm, I'm no, there we go. It will take you to this website, tefl.org, tefl-jobs-center. If you go down to here, you can do show all vacancies. Show, only show online vacancies, Rachel. And you have to give it a bit of time because I'm, using quite a bit of the hardware of my computer at the moment. But I promise you at some point coming up here will be online jobs. Yes, there you go, they're starting to come up. Teach adult, teach English via Zoom. Uh, teach English to students all over the world. There we go, business English online. Um, here we go, what's this one? Spain. <coughs> <coughs> For some reason, oh sorry. For some reason, I want a British English teacher. Uh, North American teachers. There we go. Look at those. All of those are on there. Have a look. See if any of those fit what you're trying to do, Rachel. Uh, good luck. Uh, Vanessa Dos Santos. Hi. If you decide to open an online school, how do you get accredited? Do I know the answer to that? I don't think I do. What I would say, Vanessa, is if, right, if you want to, I, I would, uh, you want to open an online school, if, are you going to be the only teacher? If you're going to be the only teacher, I don't think you need to be accredited. I think it just depends on the qualification of your teachers. Okay. If you're going to be recruiting lots and lots of uh, different teachers, because you've got a, a million students that you want to get into teaching i'd have a look at the bottom of our website because on the bottom of our website tefl.org we have the we very clearly say the companies that we are accredited by it might be worth contacting them it's not i don't think it's a cheap process to do vanessa but if you're just yourself you don't need to be accredited you just got to have good qualifications as a teacher does that answer your question vanessa no one's ever asked that before I hope it did. Uh, let me know if you didn't. Alex, any recommendations to observe other TEFL teachers hosting online classes, lessons to watch example lessons? So um, if you go, if you, uh, you know, uh, the courses that you take should be able to show this kind of thing. Okay. So that, you know, you see examples. What I would recommend for you, Alex, if this is something you want to do, is you would do something, do your theory qualification, your 120 hour, then think about doing a practical course add-on. So we, for example, offer a an add-on weekend practical course where you spend the weekend with someone like me and at the end of the Saturday and at the end of the Sunday, we also offer three and four day ones and five day ones, I think. But let's just stick with the weekend ones. On the end of the Saturday, you would watch the other teachers teach. You would also teach yourself practical and that you would get feedback from the tutor. So that's something you really want to do, Alex. I would recommend you do something like a practical add on course. I think that would be a lot more benefit to you instead of watching just asking other teachers if you can watch them because how do you know if they're good quality or not okay definitely one of our practical add-ons alex i think would be good for you uh hi 
uh juliana hello how do you get a good head start when it comes to teaching online ahead of the other so standing out from it so look probably a school if they were designing their perfect tefl teacher and i'm talking about sort of newly qualified ones what they would probably want is a, a, a high level of english is probably the most important thing so I remember someone saying they're a native speaker and can prove it or someone with a high level of uh, qualification. Then they'll look for a TEFL certificate, a good quality TEFL certificate. So if you've got those two, you're off and running. Then they will probably look for a degree just because it's usually a good selling point to be able to say to the students that their teachers have degrees. Whether that makes you a better teacher or not, I'm not sure. But that's what they will say. Then, so you've got those three things. What they're probably then looking for is a mixture of things like experience. And if you don't have any TEFL experience, it could be sort of teaching. It could be sort of training people to win a different job. It could have been mentoring younger kids at school when you were a teenager, whatever it might be. It could also be things like... Um, delivering presentations and speaking publicly bit of that in there they'll love that then they will look for something like extra modules so have you done an extra qualification or have you got a level five certificate for example that's something that we offer on our website go on our courses tefl courses section at the top of our website um do you have something like a level five qualification or do you have extra modules in the, the type of thing that they want. So have you done an extra course in teaching young learners and the job is looking for young learner teachers? Fantastic. That's what you need to be doing, Juliana. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Alex, hi Alex, haven't heard from you for a while. Hope you're doing all right. Um, what's the best ways to advertise other than having a website that you already have? You have business cards too, fantastic. Okay, so you've got one student from Gumtree. So, look, Alex, Alex has been talking to us a while about setting himself up freelance. Alex, I hope you're also working for other companies because I really do think that's the best way. Right. The best, best way to get people to your website, I think, is social media. So, as I said, recently I've set up a new website for a whole new niche that I'm going after. And it's not actually for me teaching. This is for, for me selling online courses. It's a, it's a video course that I've written, basically. I have been sending a lot of students to that website from a Facebook group, from a Facebook page, and also from Instagram. And I hate to say this, but I've even started on something called TikTok. I don't really get it. And But a YouTube as well has been really, really fantastic for me. I've been doing little clips of my videos. I've been doing little um, uh, little live question and answer things. They go okay. But the, the, the videos have been going really well and been pushing people through to my website. That's how I do it, Alex. Yeah. And I mean, I've been quite enjoying it, but I'm but I'm quite lucky in that I've also got other income streams from having a different type of website, which I've had for a while. OK. Good luck with it, Alex. Uh, Gumtree is definitely a way I've got students through Gumtree. Definitely. Definitely a good way of doing it. Good luck, Alex. Uh, Doug, I mentioned several third party tests of English ability. Trinity was one you mentioned. Where do I find them? Is there one test that's recognized as the gold standard? So what you tend to find with English tests is that some are better known within a country. So IELTS is pretty, really well known in China. And a lot of Chinese companies will want you to have an IELTS certificate if you want to prove your English ability. I think Trinity is a fantastic test. And it's used a lot in Spain and Italy. Really, really big over there. But there's also Cambridge. There's also um, the TEEP test if you're going to be doing academic English. There's also the TOEFL test, which is big in Japan. There's not one that's recognised as the gold standard. Yeah, look, I don't think you're going to go far wrong if you took the IELTS test, Doug. OK, but it's quite difficult to get a high mark. On an IELTS test. I know plenty of native speakers that have struggled to get above IELTS 7. Good luck, Doug. Um, yes, Sarah. It is common to use student testimonials to help get a job. I've got this horribly cheesy 
uh, photo section on my website where I've got people going, Carl's the best. He's just fantastic. He really helped me to fulfill my potential. So I think they're pretty good. I think they work pretty well. Yes. I, I think it's part of, a, of part of many different things, Sarah. Definitely. Yeah. Sarah, if you haven't got any, you know, just 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 see if you can reach out to someone to write one for you. OK, you'll find one. OK, Alex, uh, any service you recommend that host self-employed freelance teaching opportunities um, on a gig basis? So look, when you're freelance, you tend to find that your students don't. I find it depends on your niche, but I find that my students don't stay with me for a while because my niche is quite specific in terms of getting students to a certain level and then once they're done with that they don't need me anymore so really that is sort of a, a gig basis you know it's not i don't expect a student to stay with me for a long time I'm, in fact i'm sort of not doing my job if they do stay with me for a long time um websites that list short-term opportunity i don't think they are you know really alex it's more about if you putting yourself out there and advertising yourself you could maybe do something like Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, I think is how you spell it. But they don't list the jobs. That's you advertising and the students come to you. Yeah. I mean, you could use things like Italki, that kind of website as well. That might work for you. We've got stuff about that on our blog section. OK. But I don't I don't know of anyone where the students list looking for teachers. If somebody else knows, though, please put it in the chat uh shelly 59 you're a young spring chicken no one of the best things about teaching online is that there is no upper age limit uh especially if you're going freelance um now there are countries that have an upper age limit for their visas that might be a problem because if they sort of want to stick even though you're not physically going to that country shelly if you if they want to stick to those visa requirements they won't take people on okay but set yourself up freelance. I know plenty of people that would prefer, there's plenty of parts of the world, the Middle East, for example, where they would sort of say that I'm too young to be a teacher and I'm in my 40s. I've, ha I've had that in parts of the Middle East. Okay. Uh, uh, next question, Renee. Hello. Um, I need a dietitian. Renee, do you want to swap a bit of diet advice for a bit of TEFL advice? Uh, do you know a good source for purchasing class templates instead of me designing them, paying the service work and download them already? So for me just to follow. Uh, we offer I, that kind of thing. Alan, I think that's true, isn't it? Yes. We offer packages of lesson plans. So that might be something that you want to look at on our website. Um, if not one stop English, I think is quite good. What I would say, Renee, is that if you are looking to do your, if you've got a specific niche that you are teaching, designing your own lessons long term will fit your needs a lot better. This is one of the reasons why I don't say be Renee the uh, English teacher, because then you've got to have lessons on business English, on academic English, on exam English for kids for uh legal english whoever comes through your door you've got to have a lesson written for them if you're renee the pronunciation teacher you could write 10 amazing pronunciation lessons that you just repeat over and over again and you tweak as you go okay uh thank you renee kaylee hello oxford i my parents live in oxford seems like most of the jobs with a decent pay rate require previous experience do you think it is better to work for less than UK minimum wage as a newbie? I think it's... See, this is what I sort of said about the expectations, Kaylee. Uh, a lot of it is about being lucky with your timing. But I think you will see a lot of jobs out there which you might not... You might think I'm better off going to work for a local company. If you want, if you think teaching English as a foreign language is the job for you, then yes, get the minimum wage whilst, sorry, work for less than minimum wage whilst also setting yourself up as a freelance teacher. Also keep looking for jobs. Well, uh, and after six months, you might have the experience. Keep doing qualifications. Okay, Kaylee. So the short answer to that is it's not expected, but it might be the way to get you going. OK, however, I don't think that you'd be stuck down 
at that less than minimum less than minimum wage for a while i really don't okay good luck kaylee uh kayla what is the best application i love the emojis software to create worksheets for english grammar <laughs> reading stories um word microsoft word i use all i i don't have anything except microsoft word to make my lessons unless anybody else knows something better than that i think microsoft word or google docs i sometimes use as well is the best way I really don't think there's anything better than that, okay? And it tends to be free or very cheap. Samuel, hello. Can you help non-native TEFL teachers to feel confident? Because sometimes it seems if you must be necessary native in order to teach. Which is, it's not true. And it's madness that schools only take on native speakers. Madness. What I would say to you, Sam, is look at the companies and ask them what is then what do they see as a native speaker i do lots of exams in i'm guessing you're from africa sam and a lot of african candidates whose english isn't their first language their english grade that they get is higher than when i do na when i do native speakers a lot of the time so just contact a company sam and ask them very specifically what do you class as a native speaker? And they might say it's people with a British passport, for example, American passport, Australian passport. And that's unfortunate, but unfortunately, that's what they will say. They might say, oh, wait, they're actually it's somebody who's got an IELTS of eight. Fantastic. That could be you, Sam. All right. So don't feel left out. Keep going for it, Sam. Keep going for it. OK, uh, Gillian, uh, medical English is a niche yes there's a specific test i think it's called the occupational english test oet test which is a test of medical english good luck with that Ma uh marion you said thanks this remark oh, oh sorry right. uh, you said the situation of job is changing i do covid has changed china a lot and just the way that they've decided to look for teachers has changed a lot School hours, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Is that their time? So, right, what you need to think if you're going down, I don't know where you are, Marion. I don't know what, I don't, I'm, not, I'm sort of like, I'm, I'm a bit unsure with, in terms of the uh, time zone where you are. If you're in the UK and you want to work between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., it's difficult. You'd probably be looking for after school clubs in East Asia. Because, what, they're six, seven hours ahead of us, whatever it might be. So that would be sort of four or five o'clock. The kids come out of their high school and they get sent into a private language school. You go work for the private language school and that's your 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you're looking for students who are wanting to learn between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Japan, South Korean time, that's difficult because they're in school or they're in work. So... That is a difficult situation if you if you want it to be that time. Does that make sense, Marion? I need to know a bit more about your time difference. Uh, wherever you are in the world, wherever you're teaching, if you're going to if you're going to teach online, very often the classes happen before school or before work at the students' time, or after school or after work at the students' time. You don't tend to have many classes in like the daytime hours because they're at work or they're at school. OK, does that answer your question, Marin? I hope it does. Um, I think that's all the questions. Is it? Yes, I think it is. And I'm sorry if I didn't get around to your question. We've been going for 55 minutes, which is a, a, a fair old chunk of time. I hope that you found um, it useful. We have had lots of other, we've made lots of other videos about teaching English as a foreign language. We've done ones on what software you need. Phil, did I, uh, uh, Phil, uh, what, what, what was your question? Phil, I'm sorry, did I miss it? Uh, let me scroll back up because Phil, you're always with us and I really want to get your question. Uh, am I correct? If I don't do a TEF course view, I'm unable to apply for jobs from your website. N no. No, you can apply for jobs on our website from if you don't if you if you have a qualification from a different company, you can. What I would say to you is that the companies they look at 
our courses they know about our courses that's all i would say phil but no you could definitely and if you've got a phd fly away with it phil you could definitely apply for jobs uh on our website with a qualification but as i was sort of saying in the presentation you need to uh you, you know you need to got you got to have a good qualification a good TEFL qualification okay good i'm glad i answered that phil because i love your input into our chats so thank you very much uh thank you everybody thank you as i said um we've got loads of other videos where we've done over the last few weeks we've also um got lots more information on our website tefl.org especially in the blog section we've got a little search box and you can type in i don't know teaching in china teaching online uh teaching kids you'll find loads of web pages where we talk about that kind of thing okay thank you very much if you are still with me um have a great weekend look after yourselves and um i'll see you all again 